friends and we got uh, our let's not waste time there as well because what we're talking about as well is a continuous it's actually in continuum and the topic for today like we said on on the screen in front of us it says healing for the wounded soldier healing for the wounded soldier and our, our text for today is from Job chapter 1 verses 13 to 22 we're going to run this through so much so that we can be able to participate and ask questions and even get uh, feedback because when you say who is a soldier who is the wounded soldier so and and uh, our text is from Job chapter 1 verses 13 to 22 I believe some of us I believe a large chunk of us know the story and this is not a story most of us get to read uh, we don't go in there to read it because we, we can understand what Job went through and uh, it's just a day, I'll read it through as quick as I can. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters, this is talking about Job, were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them, when the Sabians raided them and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with the hedge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the ship and the servants and consumed them. I, I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, the Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels and took them with the hedge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. So if we, can, if we keep on reading about it, it's one story after the other, which is not palatable. It is one story after the other, which is not palatable. It is one people are dead somebody has been fire has burned somebody uh, raiders have come in to kill one it's just to make him feel hopeless so the stories are kept on coming so that for a soldier i believe every christian is a soldier because we know that this mm -hmm. life we live this is not our destination because we are here as ambassadors so we're just saying so in so one of the few things that will happen to a wounded soldier is discouragement, is the ability to go on and forge on. But today, the Bible is telling us that, yes, even as Christians, there's healing for the wounded soldier. That means there's healing for anyone who has been discouraged. There's healing for anyone who undergoes depression. So uh, our memory verse is in Psalm 147, verse 3. If Even though we are all mute, we can all read it together. From Psalm 147, verse 3, which says, He healed the broken in heart and binded up their wounds. And this is it's talking about God. It's not talking about anyone. It's, it's the one that heals the broken in heart. It's the one that heals the broken in heart. And it's the one that binds up their wounds. So it's telling us about we as Christians we are soldiers. We are soldiers. We are bound to be wounded. So, we are soldiers, we're about to do that, that God is the one that can bind up our wounds. I'll go through the introduction, I'll go through the rest and outline before I pass on to our next teacher. Amen. So I say a wounded soldier can be described as a Christian because we know that we are soldiers in this world who has been victim of unfavorable circumstances of life, trials of fate, or satanic attack, sometimes as a result of carelessness, one, it could be a result of sin, and it could also be a result of unexplainable factors. And that's such a thing. When things like that happen, it leaves that Christian with a wounded spirit. Because really, ah, how can I be wounded? You know, it be the human part of us thinking, oh, well, if I'm a soldier, why is not my general protecting me? But however, a soldier that leaves themselves out of the comfort zone or out of the context in which the general says, it, you will also, if the general says, this is where we are standing. This is where our strategy is for us to stay to fight against the enemy. But you, because you think uh -uh, and I can explore, it is, and you so that's why I say as a result of carelessness. Say so sometimes a wounded spirit comes as a result of a reaction to negative words, events, actions, or a violation of one person or rights. We can see it in the last few weeks talking about uh, uh, about the Black Lives Matters. Black Lives Matters. We trying to. People also have been wounded. Emotionally, they have been wounded. So it generates a reaction that crushes one, that knocks one down, from which one cannot seem to rise. But, but, so what I'm trying to tell us today that we should have that understanding. 
that irrespective of race or clan, we know God. That is the assurance. We know God. God is the owner of the heavens and the earth. There might be some people say, oh, they brought it to us. Yes, they, they were chance to be the ones that we were able to read before us. But yes, we have the knowledge of who God is. So we should not, and we should not allow that to keep us knocking us down. A, a, show, a soldier, a wounded soldier is not a dead soldier as long as he gets up. And because we have the understanding that it is God that can bind our wounds. They said, and such a Christian needs divine healing in order to stand and fight on as a soldier of Christ. So we're looking at the hope for a wounded soldier because our last week topic talked about discouragement. So um, today we are looking for the healing for the wounded soldier. So our, our text, for those who have just come in, our text is from Job chapter 1, from verses 13 to 22, talking about uh, a, a Job and what he went through. So we're looking at some biblical instances of wounded soldiers. And some, they, some of them got up, some of them, you know, they traveled, some of them stumbled. And even in their stumbling, they still got back up. I know some of us, I, I can't... He collects anybody say oh i'm just going to uh god let me go through the the challenges of job <laughs> no <laughs> but people will say ah oh, god let me get the blessing of job but we don't want the challenges because that challenge is is something so hard to bear so and we should there's different people said which we can use as examples some of them is elijah is, is peter that even though jesus told him say oh peter you you will deny me i say you have eaten with him you have uh, drank in the same bowl as him he has washed your feet and he tell you you deny it, and he denied i say ah no say, jesus i can't you know and you know, remember when we we're young they say to to prove to someone we're telling the truth we put finger and put it on the ground we put it in our lips and say ah no god no you know just to get i'm sure peter must have done otherwise as well to say ah no why would i deny you so we begin to look at some different people as well. And we see the instances of which being soldiers, even though they're wounded, they still got up to continue. Still got up to continue. We can see from Job in, in Job chapter one, and can, can also see in the account of David in Psalm 124. Um, I'm not going to read all that, so, but because I want us as much as possible to have uh, questions and answers and applicative instances of how we as soldiers can keep forge on because yes sometimes some of us might not be able to identify with oh that was uh, that was job in those days in those days it happens now the context is still the same it might not it might just not be someone by fire falling down it can be someone losing their job it can be a uh, broken marriages there is healing for the wounded soldier so I want us to take into that context, and I believe God will help us as we look at things like that. So we're going to look at the, the we can see the calamities that Job suffered as because God was indeed proud of him. God was indeed proud of him that he boasted about Job. So the question I like us to ask ourselves is, if God were to talk about us, can he boast about us? That, ah, foolish my boy, <laughs> don't worry, I know this boy. You can, don't worry, whatever you want to do. I'm sure even if some of us will say, oh, God, <laughs> if you want to boast, don't boast with the devil. <laughs> so we're going to have some interactive session uh, later on because I, I just want to run through. But if you have any questions, please raise your hand. And I'm sure uh, uh, if you send a message to the chat group, uh, uh, one of our teachers will actually enable and let me know that you want to talk. Amen. So, um, one of the characters, another character is Samson, which is in Judges chapter 18, in 18 to 21. I would like us to read one of it and just to see if Judges chapter 18, if you are there and just raise up your hands and uh, your audio, you can just unmute and read. i like someone else to read rather than me just doing the talking. I know we still have some few minutes to go on there before the next teacher takes the next outline. Judges chapter 18, verses 18 to 21. Anybody? 18 to 21. Yes, sir. And these went into Micah's house and fetched the carved images. Judges 18 to 21. And these went into Micah's house and fetched the carved image, image, the ephod and the teraphim, and the molten image. Then said the priest unto them, What do ye? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace. 
lay thy hand upon thy mouth and go with us and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family in Israel? 20. And the priest's house was glad and he took the effort and the teraphim and the graven image and went into the midst of the people. You can see what, what the outline is. Is there being a wounded soldier? Can, you can, another example as well. Let's just go on to in, in Peter, in Luke chapter 22. And also, uh, we had an example of Judas Iscariot. I mean, if some of us, I'm sure when we had a, a review, some of us would say, ah, Judas Iscariot. Because one of the few things we say, ah, we only try to highlight the bad thing about him. We say, ah, he's the one that betrayed Jesus. But Judas was a, a disciple in all ramifications. They were sleeping outside, he slept outside. They were walking with those shoes, the walking shoes. And Jesus was cleaning the leg, he cleaned his leg. So he must have undergone the same challenges they all went through. But in the long run, even though I know the Bible says it's, it is also telling, we say, yeah, he has to be, someone has to betray him. But he got the, he became the unlucky one. And I said, well, with period of time, I know some other theologists will say, ah, maybe it could have been Peter. But Jesus said, Peter, I have prayed for you. <laughs> but yes, irrespective of it. So it's to tell us that no matter who we are, no matter how close we think you are, no matter the grade, no matter the position, we can be wounded. And there is healing for us as well. So we can be wounded and there is healing. No matter the source of the wound, you know, we might say, oh, I'll keep on forging, keep on praying, keep on scabashing. There is the enemy is out there to wound us. The enemy is not pleased when he sees us walking around. The enemy is not pleased. He can in Elijah and Peter. The enemy is not pleased even for Peter. He say, "Ah, Peter, don't worry. Since you have denied it, ah, because uh, when the first person came, he said to deny. Mm, okay, it's not me. And but when the last person came, you know, he was nearly like swearing. You know, like I said, putting his hand on the on the floor. I said, "No, it is not me." Even though he has the shape of a Galilean, he has the bird and everything. Well, he, he, and he said, the Bible makes us understand he went and he cried, he wept. Because he, he, in his mind, he thinks, oh, I am strong. So also we as Christians, in our mind, we think, oh, no, no, this kind of uh, thing will not, uh, will not break me down. Uh -uh, is it not me? Uh, how can I steal? Or uh -uh, how can I do this? Say, the enemy is out there. The purpose of the enemy, it only has his own thing, is to steal, to kill to destroy. So, and however, when we as students of God believes that, okay, this is our thing, and, and the enemy comes, steal it. It's a pain, it's a wound for which we have to allow God to heal it. Most of us, we are so good in trying to, yes, sir, I, I'll be handing over to my Oga very soon <laughs> for the second, so that we can have the next two sessions. I'll, I'll run off the next few minutes before I pass on to the next lesson outline then we can have questions please if you have questions on where the talking talk, topic we're talking about is healing for the wounded soldier healing for the wounded soldier and the lesson text is in job it is in job chapter one and we can read from verse 13 to about 22. so as we as christians we should understand that there is healing for us that irrespective of what happened there is healing for us and the lord will help us in jesus name any questions please send it to uh, the chat room and we can be able to uh, yeah, we can talk about it and share about it. So I'll pass over to our teacher for the next uh, outline. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. Um, we're going to be taking the second outline, what to do if you are wounded. We've gone through uh, various wounds. We've seen some of the soldiers in the scriptures that were wounded, like Job was wounded. A number of us know um, the wound of Job, how, how it came. We've seen David. Uh, David was wounded as well in the scriptures. Um, in the same vein, we all might have been wounded in one way or the other. I, I see that in church, some of us suffer various wounds. Some of us talk about the church in various things, and we we try to portray the church as, you know, in a particular form. Well, I can call those ones wounds as well. 
to say, I went, did this, I did that, the church did this, church did that, that's wound, or somebody did this to you in church. Those are wounds. Now, what do you do we do if we are wounded? And just before I I tell I pick up what we do if we are wounded, I want to say that wounds can be can be physical, it can also be not physical. It could be an open or closed wound. That's what I, I mean. So some of the wounds that some Christians might have might not be visible, might not be a thing that people see, might not be something that somebody will just look at you and understand it. That is why some people's wound in church is so difficult to, to handle because they believe that somebody should have known that this is happening. Like um, our minister said, couldn't somebody have noticed that Judas Iscariot was wounded? He was a struggling person. By all means, he was. Uh, because nobody in their right mind will say, okay, I want to betray my master based on, on the scriptures. So um, a wounded soldier, what do you do if you are wounded as a soldier? The first thing we need to do is to find out, like, like Job. We know that in Job chapter 2 verse 7, we know that um, the devil went to God. And God, God gave him permission and said, go, go ahead and do what you want. That was the source of Job's problem. If Job knew the source of his problem, it would have been easy for him. Let's look at it. Job was claiming that it was God that was hurting him. And his friends, they were saying, no, God cannot do this to you because God does not punish a righteous person. So we should also sit down and look at ourselves when we are injured. Instead of having self-pity, we should try and find, are we, where is this injury coming from? Is it as a result of sin? Is it as a result of... When, when we're able to trace the, the source, then healing is inevitable because we know the root and then we can get a cure for it. Praise God. Now, we have to, as Christians, we have to be able to stand our grounds when we are wounded as Christians. We don't give up. Like our minister said last week, we did discouragement. When a, when a Christian is wounded as a soldier, we are bound to lose courage. I've seen some war movies when soldiers get injured in the war, some of them tell the others, go, leave me here, let me die. No, this you can't let him die. We can't let you die. You must not give up. You must not let discouragement set in to, for you to give up and say, I want to die. No, in the Christian faith, we fall seven times and seven times we rise up again. I've also seen war movies where people don't let them die. They carry them on their shoulder and they are, they are dragging them back. Yet yeah, they are carrying them on. Uh, to the finish line so that they take them out of the line of fire and then somebody else can trick them. So we must be able to stand our ground as Christians. We must put on the full armor of God. You know, when we talk, when we are not injured, there's a song that says that life is easy when we are not in the mountain, when we are on the mountain. But when we are in the valley, it gets tougher, it gets more difficult. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is that, you know, for somebody who is, not in the, who, is, who is on the mountain at the moment, you might be thinking, oh, if anybody is in the valley, if they are wounded, they can just pick up themselves. It's not that easy. We know it. But however, a wounded soldier must be able to pick themselves up or ask for help or speak to someone or be able to identify with that. First of all, I am wounded. I need help. I need to get out of here. That was one of the things that helped Brother Peter. Peter understood i have just denied jesus he told me but judas could not identify that so we must not be like judas we must be like peter we must be able to identify it and pick up ourselves in jesus name praise god ephesians 6 verse 10 and 11 says put on the whole armor of god if we have the whole armor of god we are able to cope when we are wounded as soldiers now some of the, uh, like Job's, Job's friend and Job, they were thinking that Job was a sinner. So for some of us, we may not be as righteous as Job. The, the, the area from where we were, the source of our, of our injury, of our wound, might have been because of sin. In that case, if we are wounded because of sin and we identify, we should repent and ask for forgiveness for sin. If we ask for forgiveness, God will forgive us our sins. If you look at James chapter 5, verse 16, it tells us about our forgiveness, our forgiveness. And the Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess and forsake them, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Um, you can also look at Proverbs um, 28, verse 13. It will also give us um, a few insight into repentance when we sin. Now, we should shun unbelief and doubt. That is one thing that causes us to stay longer when we get injured. So many of us, we start doubting God. Let's look at this, our brother, uh, John the Baptist. He was only six months older than Jesus. But he, this same man testified about Jesus. He did, he, he, people came to him and said, are you the one? He said, I'm not the one, but I know the one. He testified about Jesus many times. He was even the one that appointed Peter in the area of Jesus Christ, inside of Jesus. But however, when he was, became wounded, he sent messengers to Jesus and said, are you the one or should you look for another? Unbelief, we should guide against unbelief. We should watch out and hold on to the faith because our faith is tested when we are wounded. The Bible says, if we faint in the, day, in the day of adversity, our strength is small. That simply goes to say that our strength is tested in the day of adversity. So unbelief and doubt should not come up at that time. If it does, then our wounds might linger. And then we might stay longer in the injury and it might even uh, uh, cause the inevitable. Praise the Lord. Uh, Psalm 50 has got a lot to tell us here, and Jeremiah 8, 22. I'm not asking to read all of them because our time is really, really short. And he said, avoid negative influence and abusive relationship. There, somebody will now say, good, you might be injured because of the relationship you are in and all that. There are helps in, the ch in church. There are helps out there in the society. There are helps that can advise you, you know, speak to you about, about what to do if you fall a victim of abusive relationship or if you or if we are if we're having a, a negative influence around us we should seek the right influence even in the church we might not be in the right relationship in church we might we depends on where we are we should seek the right kind of people to move with the right kind of crowd because look at job job's friends if you look at their statements they were they were not unbelievers they knew what it meant for God to be able to punish somebody. All of them were, they were well enlightened as far as God was concerned. But at that time, were they the right places for Job to be? No, it wasn't. It wasn't the right place for Job, Job to be at that time. But thank God for Job's integrity. We all should look out for the right influence. We should move away from negative influence. First Corinthians 6, 14. We all know what is there in First Corinthians 6, 14. And First Corinthians 15, 33. God helps us as we go through these scriptures. Please write, take the scriptures down and go through them um, after the after this meeting, and God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, I just want us to, at this moment, I want to pause a little bit. If anybody has a contribution to make or a question, I would like to take it now because we might not have it at the end of the of the of the talk. Um, if you if you have it, please do put up, put up your hand. We are trying to make sure that people don't disturb and we don't get a negative um, 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 things coming into. Uh, that is why if I mute you, it is because you are you are muted yourself without um, putting your hand up. Thank you, Brian, uh, Mr. Samson. I will just let you in now and do uh, unmute yourself, please. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Th thank you for the uh, wonderful uh, teaching. Yeah, just to uh, have that. Uh, 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 the reason for our wound uh, at times may not necessarily be as a result of sin. Uh, if we have a look at the life of Joseph, Joseph, what he passed through, you know, uh, he was thrown into the pit. Uh, he was sold to the Midianites. Uh, he passed through a lot. He was tormented and, uh, you know, that ultimately, uh, you know, the glory of the Lord was revealed uh, in his life. So, uh, you know, we should also remember that uh, the Bible says that for our light affliction, uh, which is bought for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So you may be wounded. It may not be because you have sinned. It may not be because you are falling short of God's glory. But ultimately, God wants to manifest himself in your life and in my life. I had an experience which I shared uh, during the review. Uh, you know, uh, I worked for someone uh, last year for about five months and the person did not pay me. And, you know, I was asking question as to why that happened to me because, the, you know, uh, to the glory of God, I do pay my tithe. I do what I need to do to the glory of God. 
But what the uh, Spirit of God was ministering to me afterwards was that what you have passed through, I made you to pass through it so as to prove to you that you are not the one taking care of yourself. Because during these five months, I never lacked anything to the glory of God. So you may be wounded now. It may not be because you have sinned, but ultimately because God wants to reveal himself in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Minister. Um, that was very helpful. Yeah, it's true. All, all, all of them are not caused a lot of sin. We are just going through all of them, one after the other. Like Job's one was not as, as a lot of sin. So thank you so very much, sir. That was very, very insightful. And we have a few questions here in the, in the chat. Um, um, we have a few questions here in the chat. I'm just going to um, mention one of them from our Sister Joy. How do I identify a soldier who is spiritually wounded? I'm going to put this question to the house. I'm not going to answer it. How do I identify a soldier who is spiritually wounded? See, it is not physical. Also, I also I do. How do I identify as a physically wounded soldier? Sequel to the first question: How do I help a wounded soldier without getting wounded in the process? Praise God. So, anybody want to help us out? Please just kindly put up your hand and let us allow you in, and then you can give us um, God's wisdom. Praise God. How do I identify a wounded soldier? And um, why people are thinking about it? I understand that sometimes to to talk in this kind of platform is a bit difficult. But however, this is the the new norm. We all have to get used to it. So I was I was you know I wasn't um, I, I didn't feel very okay when when I started. But to the glory of God, we're getting better. So brethren, how do I identify a wounded soldier? If the wound is not physical, it's not visible. It is almost impossible to identify a wounded soldier. It is almost impossible. But however, with the spirit of God, we've got the spirit of the assignment. We've got different, God can show to us. But that doesn't mean that he will show it to us all the time. So to a wounded soldier, it's one thing to be wounded. That is why relationships is important in church. You know, people you relate with, they will know you. They will see you, you don't pray enough anymore. They will see you, you withdraw from church. From church. Praise the Lord. Is anybody say hand up? Mr. Mecca has uh, got his hands raised. Hallelujah. Okay, thank you, sir. I didn't see it. Uh, Mr. Mecca, uh, over to you. Okay, you can mute yourself now, please, sir. Oh, sorry, I did that again. Please unmute. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Okay. Um, I just wanted to answer a bit on the question. Um, how to identify a wounded soldier? Um, the first way I think uh, you can identify someone who is wounded is um, you would notice a change in attitude um, and um, some some of them, because it's not physical, um, in the attitude, they, they can suddenly become downcast. Um, for some others, just like physically, if somebody is wounded, if you touch that part of the body where the wound is, the person will react in an uncommon way the person will scream you know ah you touched my wound you know in that same way that's how people react when you touch a part of their life where they have been wounded um if somebody was raped when they were little um and they they've been growing up with that wound when they hear of relationships they react in an uncommon way so you can look out for those um uncommon reactions to normal circumstances and the first one like i said is change in attitude so that could be ways to identify um a wounded soldier and how how then do you deal with it um for me uh, i would say uh, pray about it trust the holy spirit to um, guide you in the steps to take because most of the times the steps to take for one may not be the step to take for the other so I trust that uh, with the leadership of the Spirit of God per time, we will always get things right. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so very much, sir. God bless you for that uh, wisdom and insight. So, yeah, attitude. If I can add to that, sir, can add to that just to okay. add with uh, what uh, Mr. Maker said, mm -hmm. I know uh, Dr. Tony, who's, uh, uh, in, in the words of our, of our book, How Are You? It's, it's just like we should ask meaningfully 
you know, when we're asking, how are you? It should not just be like we're just asking for asking sake, because one, you won't be able to know for someone, uh, for someone who is wounded, you can only know that in a conversation, when you strike a conversation, but if you are just, you know, quite flippant with your conversation. So that means whatever conversation we're going to have, let it be meaningful. Let it be meaningful. If we are asking, let's, let us mean it rather than just make it flippant because uh, nobody will actually go out to say, ah, do you know what happened to me today? Do you know I lost my job? Or do you know what happened today? Do you know I got jilted? Or do you know what happened? You know, the, the thing, so we, let us, let our conversation be more meaningful. So then we can be able to know that someone is wounded. Praise God. So th those are some of the ways we identify. And for a wounded person, we need wisdom to be able to help them, help wounded people. We have so many scriptures, and in church as well, I'm still reacting to the question, in scripture as well, there we have, um, in churches as well, we have various departments, we have head of department, we have things set in place to help people. Uh, it depends on what the wound is. Uh, in that case, I can't give specific to say, okay, if this person was wounded, do this. It has to actually depend on the kind of wound that the person has. For example, if somebody is down financially, has just lost the job, and it's not, that treatment will not what the treatment will be. So it just depends on the kind of wound. So the, the biggest thing is to be able to identify it and then be able to plug into it. Praise the Lord. If we see other for that hands up, please kindly let us know. And then I'm going to proceed. It said, um, avoid making impulsive decisions. Yes, that is one of the things that we have two questions. I know the other, the sequel. How do I help? I know you said another question is can a wounded soldier be forgiven like Judas? Was he forgiven? Uh, okay. If a wounded person seeks forgiveness from God, they will receive mercy. Uh, this is from Minister Funke. Yeah, if a wounded person, yes, she said if a wounded person seeks forgiveness from God, they will receive mercy from God. That is what the word of God says. Exactly. Exactly. If a wounded person seeks uh, forgiveness. Now, look, let's look at Job. Job chapter 42. That, that gives us um, uh, an, an insight into it. Job chapter 42, verse 10. He said, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Now, Job forgave his friends. He, 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 he prayed for them, and God turned it around. So, like Minister, uh, Minister Funke said, yes, God will actually um, turn it around for you if you if you seek forgiveness and you follow the principles that a soldier is wounded does not mean that he should fly off the handle job was told to fly off the handle to do whatever he wants to do and let him die he did it and at the end of the day we know what happened to job praise god yes any other contribution to that any other contribution okay that's fine now impulsive decisions it is very, 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 very uh, much uh, possible and likely that someone will make a take a decision that will favor him at that time. Now, impulsive decisions might throw us into a deeper pit than we would have been in if we enjoy it. There is one thing that we usually say laughingly uh, in our yes sir, in our in our class. We do say that oh, um, when people give testimony. Did they actually pass through the process to get the testimony that God actually wanted them to get, or did they take shortcut? So what I'm saying is that when we get wounded, we should not take shortcut. We should not make impossible decisions. We should let the work. We should let that the the wound or the thing we are going through actually work in us and bring out the best of God in our lives. Praise God. We we'll look at that in in uh, in, in the book of Kings where um um where Elijah said, God, kill me now, let me die now, because I am the only one left. Of course, he was not the only one left. That was impossible. We all know when he went through it, how God took him to heaven. It was glorious. We, we, we have so many other places in the scriptures where people have made impossible decisions that wasn't right because they were wounded and they needed a quick fix. Now, further, uh, further to the scripture I just read, forgive any human agent. The Bible says, forgive and you will be forgiven. And that is um, one of the healing things that we need to do if we are wounded as soldiers. But these are not easy. And finally, we did say here that we should watch. In First Peter 5, 8, the scriptures say we should watch. Now, having been wounded, and we have noticed, we have we able to trace the source, 
we should watch so that it doesn't happen again. But sometimes, I, I, while I was meditating to that, I, I realized that Job was watching, but even it still came. But if it happens, we should go back to the root again. It's just a process. It's like a circle we go through. And the, many businesses use this circle, this business model, when they are having their business. It's like you create a process, you evaluate it, you look, uh, sorry, you look, you, you, you check it, you implement it, you run it, you, you evaluate it, you, 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 in, you amend whatever is, is not working there, and then you go back the same circle again. That is the same circle I want to bring to us today. In the remaining three minutes, I just want to ask us this question before I round up. How do we know that we have fellowship with God? How do we know that we have fellowship with God? That requires the house to, to answer. So if you are in the house and you, you want to say something, please say it in the chat. Or uh, someone say, yes, that Catherine asked the question here. How do, we, how do you manage when you are wounded and the offender is not genuinely repeat, repented? That's what you want to write, repented. How do you manage? Please, house, I need help with that. How do you manage? When, Star Livia, thank you very much for raising up your hand. I would let you uh, in now. Please unmute yourself. Good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, now you know that you have fellowship with God. That's the one I wanted to add to. Okay. Um, how we have fellowship, what, how we know. I think the question is, how do we know that we've had fellowship with God. Fellowship. When we have, when we have fellowship with God, you, it's like, it's like a presence. You feel the presence of God. Um, you know when you've gotten there. You know when, in your place of worship or in your place of place of prayer, you have actually uh, made contact. You know when it's just all mechanical. You know when it's all just you stressing out and you know when you've actually felt that god has heard you if you are praying you know when um the presence of god overwhelms you so it's not something that is physical it's something that you feel in yourself and the other bible study we had um the pastor was um teaching us how to create that atmosphere for ourselves um for the presence of god so uh, he tried to outline a few things that we can do but you know it when you connect you know it there's that feeling, that ambience that it's it's only you that can explain. It's not something that we can tell you this is how it should look. It should look purple or blue or that. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you so much, Talibia. Thank you so very, very much. Yes, we it's as she, she said it all. If when you when you are in the presence of God, you know it. Nobody will tell you that, oh, this is not it, this is it. You know. Um is there anybody else that want to expand expansion on it? I don't really want to talk uh, on that one. Anybody else? And Sir Catherine said, how do you manage when you are wounded and the offender is not genuinely repented? Our forgiveness is not based on the, the, on the offender repenting. No, it's not. I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm in the same shoes as you. We live in the same world, we live in the same Coventry. Uh, uh, fortunately, I have, to, I have to know, I know Sister Catherine very well. It's not, it hasn't got anything to do with the person or, or repenting or not repenting. Your forgiveness, forgiveness is for your sake, not for the sake of the person. So, uh, Jesus, God, He said, "As God, for Christ's sake, forgave us." In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He, God wasn't saying us that we're going to repent. That was why He died. No, He died. It's a difficult thing, but that is what we need to do. Praise the Lord, Minister. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. We are uh, we are finishing now, and thank you so much. There are other questions, please. All the questions that we've got, we could actually be able to uh, compile them and we ask them. You could just send it to any of our teachers. And if you have any other questions, pass on the school. We'll be always here to actually have a chat with you. Thank you so much uh, for uh, Sunday school. Let's get ready for service so that we'll click on. And um, well, can we just pray? Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you because we know that there's healing with you. Lord, for those who have been hurt by one thing or the other, by one person or the other, we ask, oh Lord, because we know that you are the balm that is in Gilead. We ask that you bring, you use your balm to suit our wounds and to heal us. Bring us back, oh Lord, on track. 
by your saving grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we see you in service. Thank you so much, everybody. It's so nice to see every one of us. And uh, we'll see you uh, during the service. God bless you. Bless you too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. The Lord is good. All the time, the Lord is good. Once again, you are welcome to today's service. Today, 14 June 2020. We bless God for keeping us alive and making it possible for us to be in his presence this morning. I just wanted to lift your voice wherever you are. Let's just begin to worship God. Let's just lift our voice and bless the King of Kings. 
Let's lift our voice and worship the Lord of Lord. Let's lift our voice and worship the ancient of days. Let's worship the immortal God, the invisible God, the only wise God. Let's say, Father, we worship you, Lord. What a great God you are. What a mighty and awesome God you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are the King of glory. You are the Lord of Lord. You are the ancient of this. You are the I am that I am, Lord. You are the many potent God. You are the many science God. You are God that changes not in the mighty name of Jesus. You are the beginning. You are the ending. You are the first. You are the last. What a beautiful God you are. What a great and awesome God you are. We give you praise. 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 You are the covenant keeping God in the name of Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth bow before him. Even angels bow before him. We worship you, Lord God of wonders beyond the galaxy. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. The universe declare your majesty in the name of Jesus. You are holy. You are righteous. You are highly exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Who can be compared to you, Lord? Who can be likened to you, Lord? You are glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. You are God of wonders in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. You are great. You are powerful in the name of Jesus. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You are the beginning. You are the ending. You are the first. You are the last. In the name of Jesus, you are the rose of Sharon. You are the lily of the valley. You are the brighter morning star. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we worship you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you honor. Please, Lord, accept our worship. Accept our praise. Accept us this morning. Accept our sacrifice of praise. Accept us this morning, Lord. Accept our sacrifice of worship. Accept our sacrifice of praise. Accept our sacrifice of thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift our voice to just worship you, Lord. Lord, we just lift our voice in the name of Jesus. We bless you. We worship you, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. The covenant keeping God, we worship you, Lord. You are God. God you are God of covenant, Lord. You are the covenant keeping God. Oh, we worship you. Holy are you, Lord. Mighty are you, Lord. Handsome are you, Lord. You are God that set the throne in heaven. You made the earth your foot to in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, the earth cannot contain you, Lord. You made the heaven, you Lord, where you live. The heaven cannot contain you, Lord. You made the earth, the earth, your foot to, Lord. We bless you. We worship you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Lord is so big. You are so big, them, Lord. The earth cannot contain you. Then you set the throne in heaven, Lord. You are so big, the heaven cannot contain you, Lord. You made the earth your foot to, Lord. We bless you. We bow down before your throne, Lord, this morning. Lord, we worship you, Lord. What a mighty God we serve. What a awesome God we serve. What a great God we serve. What a powerful God we serve. We give you praise. 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 Yes, 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 yes. We say, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive all our praise. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive our worship. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive our heart. No, you are worthy, O oh Lord. Yes, 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 yes. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Invisible God, a miracle worker. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Invisible God, a miracle worker. Oh, you are worthy, oh Lord. Can we just lift our and just worship this God that is worthy, invisible God. Even though we cannot see God, we cannot see you, Lord, but we can see the work of your hand. Oh, that's why we worship you, Lord. You are God of wonders. You are God of glory. You are God of power. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are the beginning of all beginning. You are God that have no ending, Lord. Father, we worship 
worship you, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Sir. What a great God you are. What a mighty God you are. In the name of Jesus, we say you are, you are, you are. You are, you are, you are. You are, you are, you are. Oh, mighty God you are. You are, you are, you are. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, mighty God, you are. Can we just, just worship this mighty God? They just say, mighty God, you are, ancient of grace, you are, I am that I am, you are, immortal God, you are, invisible God, you are, the only wise God, you are. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive praise. Thou art worthy to receive honor. Thou art worthy to receive our praise, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have no other God but you oh we have no other god we have no other god but you lord you are god you are god you are god the lord that have done what no man have done you are god that will do what no man will do yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord we worship you we honor you you are worthy we worship you, Lord. We bless you. We worship you. We honor you, Lord. Let us lift our voice and say, Father, let's just begin to appreciate him. Let's appreciate God. Let's say, Father, we appreciate you, Lord. We honor you for all you have been doing in our life. For all that we have been doing in our life in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to lift your voice and appreciate God. Say, Lord, I thank you for the miracle of sleeping and waking. Let's say, Lord, thank you for waking me, not allowed to live in this morning. Father, I thank you, Lord, for counting me among the living this morning. The, the Bible says, that, Lord, it said, the mercy of God, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I just want to lift your voice in that direction and appreciate God for your life. Appreciate God for your loved one. Appreciate God for your family. Let's appreciate God. Let's say, Lord, I appreciate you, Lord. You are good and your mercies endure forever. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. You are good and your mercies forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercies forever. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate God because it's good. His mercies endure forever. We are a product of his mercy. Let's say, Father, I thank you, Lord, for provision. Can you say, Lord, I thank you for provision, Lord. Thank you for supply all my need. According to riches in glory by Christ Jesus, list of us say, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the food of your table. Thank you for the hair you breathe. Thank you for the house where you live. Thank you for the roof upon your head. Say, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Once again, I say, Lord, I thank you for the miracle of, Lord, for the gift of life. Can you just appreciate God? Lord, we are alive to know because our power, not because of any other thing. We are alive because God wants us to be alive. That's why I want us, Lord. That's why I want us to lift our voice this morning. Say, Lord, I thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If you look at Psalm 118, begin to look for verse 1. He say, give thanks to the Lord because he is good. Say, give thanks to the Lord because he is good and his love is internal. Can you just say, Lord, I give thanks to you, Lord, because you are good. You are good unto me. You are good unto my family. You are good unto my. You are good unto my children. You are good unto my wife. You are good to JCC, Lord. Oh, blessed be your name, Lord. Father, I give you thanks. Say, give thanks to the Lord because He is good. Lord, I give you thanks because You are good. Oh, Your mercies endure forever. Thank you, Lord. 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 He said, Let the people of Jesus say, His love is standard. Let the priest, let the pastor, let the priest of God say, His love is standard. Let all who worship, or worship Him say, Can you give me that in translation in verse 3? 
Give Lord in verse 4. Give me another translation in verse 4. Psalm 118, verse 4. He said, Let those who fear the Lord now see his mercies endure forever. Just lift up and say, Lord, thank you, Lord, because your mercy endure forever, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. We are alive because of his mercy. Oh, we have life. We have received him because of his mercy. The mercy of God. Let us lift up and say, Lord, thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Yes, yes. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. To you be all that glory. In Jesus' name we pray. In John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, see, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But verse 9, he said, if we confess our sin, if you confess our sin, God is just and faithful. To forgive us all our unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. Let's lift our voice and say, Lord, have mercy upon me, Lord. I say, first John chapter one, verse eight. First John chapter one, verse eight and nine. First John chapter one, verse eight and nine. First John chapter one. Say, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Yes, verse nine says, but if we confess our sin, our God is faithful and just to forgive all our sins and to cleanse us for all our unrighteousness. This morning, I just want to go to God, say, Father, I confess all my sin, both hidden, both secret, both open sin. Lord, I ask, Lord, for forgiveness because the Bible says if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive all our sins and to cleanse us for all our unrighteousness. Lift your voice, say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I confess all my sin, every hidden sin, I'm Lord, every sin I've committed in the open, the one I've committed in the secret, the one I thought nobody sees me. Oh Lord, Father, I come to you this morning. Have mercy upon me in the mighty name of Jesus. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Let's go to God. Let's talk to God and ask God for mercy. Let's say, Father, be merciful unto me, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, cleanse me, Lord, from all. All my unrighteousness, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, cleanse me, Lord, cleanse me, Lord, cleanse me, Lord, from all my unrighteousness, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Psalm 32, verse 1 and 2, yes. Psalm 32, verse 1 and 2 says, Blessed is he who transgression. Give me that one in good news translation. Blessed is he. Say, Happy are those whose sin are forgiven, whose wrong wrongs are pardoned. I want to go to God. The Bible says, happy, happy are those whose sins are forgiven, those who wrongs are pardoned. Today, I want to, because I want to live a happy, I want, after today, I want to become to live a happy life. Say, my father, my father, say, Lord, forgive me all my sin, Lord. Pardon me for all my wrongs, no, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Can we go, go to God? Can we lift our voice and pray and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, do you see your word says, happy are those whose sins are forgiven, whose wrongs are pardoned. My Father, my Father, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I come to you this morning. I ask, Lord, Lord, forgive me, Lord. All my sin, all my sin, all the sin of my people, every sin oh Lord for my father my mother even to back to 10 generation all oh, my personal sin every sin that I've committed knowing unknowingly every unrighteousness every word that I've come out of my mouth that don't glorify you every action every deed everything that I've touched everything I've seen everything I've looked everything that I've entered into me one way or the other that's ungodly that's unrighteous that is contrary to your will Lord I come to you this morning Lord I say Lord your Lord pardon me Lord of all my wrongs doing my wrongs that I've done to my wife the wrong that I've done to my children the wrong that I've done to you God the wrong that I've done to my brothers the wrong that I've done to my sisters the wrong that I've done Lord to my neighbor the wrong that I've done Lord to my co-workers the wrong that I've done Lord to anybody the wrong that I've done Lord to any of my minister the wrong that I've done Lord to any of the worker the wrong that I've done to all the, any member of the church every wrong that I've done oh Lord no Knowingly, unknowingly, Lord, I come to you, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. Let's ask God for pardon. Let's ask God for pardon. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's see verse 2 of that Psalm 32. Verse 8. Happy is the one who the Lord does not accuse of doing wrong. 
and who is free from all deceit? Who can be free of all deceit? Who can be free of wrongdoing unless the man, the woman that got you mercy? Say, my father, my father, my father. Say, oh Lord, I pray on the ground of your mercy. Lord, don't accuse me. In the mighty name of Jesus, if God accused anybody, can that person be Lord? Can, can, can it be justified? No. Say, my father, my father, because of the blood of your son that was shed upon the cross of Calvary, because of the work of salvation, because of the suffering of Jesus on the cross, because of the strap upon his back, because of the humiliation, Lord. Oh, Father, because the Lord, because the Bible says, cause there is a man that hung upon the tree, because of the cause he has carried for me. Lord, please, on the ground of your mercy, Lord, Father, don't accuse me of wrongdoing, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, by the power of the blood of Jesus, let everyone accuse me. Let all let the accuser of the brethren be silent on my behalf. Over my issue, over my life, I silent the accuser of brethren in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Give me verse 5 for Psalm 32, the verse 5 for faith. The Bible says in verse 5, say, Then I confessed my sin to you. I did not conceal my wrongdoings. I decided to confess them to you and you forgive all my sin. Say, my father, my father, as I've confessed my sin today, because you are just and faithful, Lord, forgive me all my sin, Lord. I confess them, all my wrongdoing, Lord. I am not, Lord, I am not hiding any other excuse. I am not, not hiding. I am because of that, because of this, Lord, no. I am not saying that. But, Lord, I humble. I come to you with a humble heart. I confess all my wrongdoing. I confess all my transgression i confess all my sin i confess all my iniquity i confess all my unrighteousness lord before you i say father forgive me all my sin lord in the mighty name of jesus he said i decided to confess them to you and you forgive all my sin father forgive me all my sin lord in the mighty name of jesus yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord in the mighty name of jesus in jesus name we pray Psalm 32 verse 7, yes. Psalm 32 verse 7, the Bible says, it says, you are my hiding place. You will save me from trouble. I sing aloud of your salvation because you protect me. I want just to lift a voice of one, say, my father, my father, you are my hiding place. Lord, save me from every trouble. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray wherever you are. He said, you are my hiding place. You will save me from trouble. My father, my father, father, you are my hiding place. Father, you are my hiding place. Father, save me from every trouble. In the mighty name of Jesus, save me from the trouble of the day. Save me from from the trouble of the night in the mighty name of jesus lord save me lord from every mommy trouble save me from every disaster save my children save my wife lord save every member of this church in the mighty name of jesus because lord you protect us lord say my father my father may the lord protect me lord be my shield be my buckler be my defense lord lord you are my rock of ages lord oh lord Lord, I hide myself in thee. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray. In Psalm 34, verse 4. Psalm 34, verse 4. Psalm 34, verse 8. I pray to the Lord. And he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. I want to lift a voice this morning. Say, my father, my father, I lift my voice unto the Lord as I pray, Lord. Answer me, Lord. Free me, Lord, from all my fears. Brethren, what is causing you, Lord? What is bringing fear into your heart? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of tomorrow? Are you afraid of what's going to happen next? Are you afraid of your head? Are you afraid of your business? Are you afraid of your family? Are you afraid of your career? Are you afraid concerning anything? Are you afraid concerning your ministry? Are you afraid concerning your tomorrow? The Bible said, the Sammy said, I prayed, oh Lord, and he answered me. So, Lord, that's now we are going to pray. 
concerning concerning that situation, the psalmist was afraid. But he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord answered him, and he set him free from all his fear. Remember, the Bible says, God says, He has not given us the spirit of fear. You are going to pray whatever God has not given to you. You are going to reject it because it's not from God. He said, I have not given the spirit of fear. So you are going to lift your voice, say, Father, the psalmist said, I pray to the Lord, and he answered me. For Lord, as you answer the psalmist, as you save him from all his fear, Father, answer me, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, free me from the fear of tomorrow, for the fear of my future, for the fear of my ministry, over my ministry, Lord, all my fear, all my concern, Father, free me in the mighty name of Jesus, fear over my head, fear over, Lord, over my children, in the mighty name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. Yes, 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 yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. The same Psalm 34 verse 6. Psalm 34 verse 6. The Bible says, the helpless call to him and he answers. He saved them from all their trouble. Brethren, when they say, heaven help those who help themselves, those who can help themselves, heaven will not help them. The Bible says the helpless. Not those who can, if you can help yourself, heaven will not help you. So, so that word, they say, the, uh, the, uh, the heaven help those who help themselves, it's not, it's not true. Because when you are helpless, you call upon God. If you can help yourself, heaven will not help you. Say, my father, my father. I am helpless. Father, save me from all my troubles. I need your help. Those who, those who can help themselves, they don't, need, they don't need the help of God. But for me, I need the help of God. I am helpless in every area of my life. I am helpless, Lord, even spiritually. I am helpless financially. I am helpless in my ministry. I am sometimes, I don't know what to do. I'm confused. I am helpless. But I, Lord, but the psalm says, when he's helpless, when he's helpless, he call upon the Lord. He answer him. I call to him. Father, I call to you, Lord. In my helplessness, help me. Lift your voice and pray. In your study, God will help you. If you tell him, you are helpless. If you, Lord, if you humble yourself and come to God and let God see, let see your nakedness, he will cover you. Ah, he said, come to me. It was when he was addressing some churches in the book of Revelation. He said they thought they are rich, he said, but they are poor. He said they thought they are weird, he said, but they are naked. He said, come to me, I will cover you. Say, Father, I am helpless. Help me. Ah, a kapose the helpless call to him is only those who are helpless that call upon God. If you are, if you can help yourself, you don't need God. But for me, I am helpless. Father, I need you. Hey, I need you. Oh, I need you, Lord. Lord, I need you. I am helpless, Lord. Help me. Help my children. Help my wife, Lord. Help my children concerning their career. Help them in their study. Help them in life, Lord. Direct them, Lord. Oh, Lord, re Lord, reveal unto them, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, help me, Lord, in my ministry. I am helpless. Hey, I lead my eyes upon the hill. Where will my help coming from? My help coming from the Lord God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. Creator of heaven and earth, help me. The creator of heaven and earth, I run to you this morning. Help me. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lift your voice and pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah, in Jesus' name we pray. Psalm 34, verse 7. The next verse, verse 7 says something there. It says, His angel guards those who honor the Lord and rescue them from danger. The angels, his angel, whose angel? Angels of God. They guide as a bodyguard to those who honor the Lord. The first prayer I want to pray, say, my father, my father, give me the grace to constantly honor you. Ah, say, Lord, I receive the grace this morning to 
constantly honor the Lord in the name of Jesus. Father, in any area that have not, Lord, that have dishonored you, have mercy on me. Forgive me, Lord, in any area, Lord, that have dishonored you, dishonor those who are put in place of authority, dishonor those who are put in place of power, dishonor even those who are put in power. Lord, have mercy, because your word says, those who honor the Lord, you will rescue them. You will give your angels as their bodyguard. Lord, oh hey, Lord, Father, give me the grace to honor you. Father, give me the grace to honor you with my substances, to honor you with my behavior, with my Lord. Give me grace, Lord, to honor you, even the way I do your work. Give me the grace to honor you as per touching anything that I need to do with you, Lord. Father, give me the grace to honor you, Lord, in any area that I have not honored the Lord. Father, forgive me, Lord. Show me mercy. Father, Father, I pray that your word say your angel guide those who honor the Lord. Father, I pray, let your angel be my bodyguard. Your word says you will give your angel charge over me to keep in all my ways. So that I will not dash my foot against the stone. Father, release your angel. Angel that is mighty in power, that is sweet, that is fast. Oh Lord, more than the Lord, more than the spirit of light. Your angel that is full of power. Oh Lord, release your angel. Oh Lord, to guide me, to guide my children, to guide my wife. Release your angel to guide the JCC and every member of the church in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, rescue me, Lord. And and the Bible says, and the Lord, and the Lord, he lost one of the Lord and rescued them from that danger. Father, rescue me from every danger. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, rescue me. Father, rescue me for every danger. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, let's look at Psalm 35, verse 1. Psalm chapter 35, the first verse of it says something there. It says, Lord, oppose those who oppose me. Lord, and fight those who fight against me. Oppose those who oppose me, Lord, and fight those who fight against me. Say, my father, my father, oppose those who oppose me, Lord. Fight those who fight against me. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift your voice and turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Pray, 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 pray. Mas le kapo shakendalia. And let sekelia kotoria bashakandala. Li prakuta le keteria bashendaya. E kaba sendere bukanda. Oppose those who oppose me, Lord. Everyone opposing me. Everyone against me. Father, oppose them, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every power, every man, every woman fighting against me. Every demon fighting against me. Father, fight against them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every power fighting against me tonight. Every power press me down my bed. Every power blood fighting me in my dream. Every power fighting me physically. Every power fighting me spiritually. Father, rise. Fight against them. Blessed, blessed be your name. Glory to your name. Honor to your name. Worship to your name. Let's just lift our voice and appreciate the God that answer prayer. God, you are God that answer prayer. I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you worship. I give you adoration, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, blessed, blessed, blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are God. We worship you, honor, we adore you. Thank you, you are God that answer prayer. As you have prayed, Father, Lord, answer all our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, today we receive grace, we receive power to honor you in every area of our life in the mighty name of Jesus. As we honor you, begin to protect us, Lord. Father, we confess to you that we are helpless. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, you help those who are helpless. Father, we confess in areas that, that we have revealed ourselves to you that we are helpless. In those areas, help us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Father, once again, we pray, Lord, as men that are fighting against us, fight against them. Oppose those who oppose us in the mighty name of Jesus. Grant us victory to the glory of your name. Thank you, Lord, as we continue to serve and continue with us, them, Lord. Father, as we go into session of praise and worship, we ask, Lord, give us a garment of praise and worship, Lord. Let us worship in the spirit and the truth, and let us be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. The rest of the service to your hand, Lord, have your way in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. 
Please, can we rise to our feet this Sunday morning? Help me walk around and shake about seven people. Make sure it gets to seven. Show them love. Show them love. Show them love. Show them the love of God. Spread the love of God to your brother, to your sister. Someone standing by your side. Come on, somebody. Good. Greet somebody this morning. Give somebody a holy handshake. Give somebody a holy hug. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, want to take us to the Caribbean side. Praise the Lord. Anybody from the Caribbeans in this place? We are from the Caribbeans this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, let's do it together, guys. Let's go. Come on.
coração Lord, you are yourself Come on everybody, let's sing our song
loves to you, oh God. How many of us believe that this morning? Lift your voice and say, I like you to look for your worship this morning wherever you kept it. Oh, I like you to forget where you are standing this morning. All power is in your hands. All power is in your hands.
the tone and that in the middle is not the way you just say it. It's a period. Say, God about to take you from one level of glory to another level of glory. That toe, that works to be done. And that is why a lot of people stay in one level of glory because the price to pay in that when they're in that toe, they don't pay it. So when God says, I will take you from glory to glory, from strength to strength, that is work. If you look at life of, life of David, he was taken from glory to glory, Joseph, but that, that toe in the middle, that toe, that is the valley. That toe, that is, that is the uh, house of Potiphar. That toe, that is the prison. From glory to. So that toe is not just say from glory to glory. That toe, that's a walk. From strength to strength. That's something you need to do. It's all about what we do in the toe that gives us the outcome to go to the next level. It's what we do in that toe that will give you the, uh, give you the outcome. It's about what to do in between the glory to glory. And that toe is where the battle takes place. That's what the Bible says. See, the Bible does not say that if you just read the verse in Galatians 6 9. Yes, let's ask Galatians 6 9 again. The Galatians 6 9 just he said, So let us not become tired. So we should continue. Don't be tired in that effort. Don't be tired in that research. Don't be tired in reading. Don't be tired in investing. Don't be tired in prayer. Don't be tired in fasting. Don't be tired in sowing. Don't be tired in giving. Because if you are not give up, if you don't give up, the time will come that the harvest will come. But if you give up, the harvest will not come. The bread will not come. That is it. So we move forward this morning by looking at Psalm 30 verse 5. Psalm 30 verse 5 says something. The Bible says Psalm 30 verse 5. For, the, uh, for, the, for his anger endure but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Give me that in good news translation. Yes, let me see what it says. He said, in his anger lasts only a moment. His anger lasts for a moment. But that moment may we not be part of it. Amen? That moment is devastating. Go ask the Egyptians. But his goodness is for a lifetime. Tear may flow in the night, but joy comes the morning. And that is what people don't understand. The night we are talking about there is not the night of eight hours. Morning is not necessarily a time of the day. But it is when you are high, wake up. It is not necessarily the factor of days. When I say, and joy come in the morning. It is time that you wake up. It's a kind, it is a kind of difficult to fight for a breakthrough in this generation. But because we are all so used to getting things in the right way. So in this generation, it's very difficult to fight for breakthrough. We don't want to fight. This is what they call the, the, the microwave age. Anything breakthrough microwave. But remember, I said something. I said, from glory to glory, that that toe, that's what the battle is. So, it is, it, it is today, today culture is fast food, instant message, quick feast type of culture that can lead us to being impatient individual. We want everything, pack, 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 pack. The pack, pack, pack generation, quick, quick. See, when we talk about long suffering, it's a long suffering. The Bible says, keep on doing good. Keep on, keep on sowing because your season harvest is coming. Sometimes, we might even get to the attitude that if, you, if we have to battle for it or wait for it, it is not of God. Sometimes, ah, if I need to wait for it, if I need to fight for it, that's not for God. Because the gift of God, they have no repentance. It just drops. It doesn't drop like that. It doesn't work that way. But what we need is that man, that woman that is willing to fight for their bread to like Jacob. That man, that woman 
that we need, the man that we enjoy unlimited breakthrough is that man, is that brother, that sister, is that boy, that girl that is ready to fight. Like Jacob. Jacob fight for his breakthrough. He fought the angel to the stand still. And the angel said, let me go. Say, you go nowhere. Say, I will not let you go until you bless me. The, the, you, the, the prayer I call the takuti alone prayer. I takut alone, Lord, until you do it, Lord, I'm not living here. And Jacob received his breakthrough. His name was changed from Jacob to, uh, to, to what? To Israel. He fought. He fought. He wrestled for his blessing. I want to ask you, are you a wrestler? You have to wrestle. If there's anybody that is willing to put in, in some work for that breakthrough in your family, are you ready to put in the work for that breakthrough? Listen and listen very well. Nothing good come easy. Jim Dalishay said, come easy, go easy. Nothing easy, come, let it, nothing good come easy. Is there anybody here that is willing to wrestle for that breakthrough in your life, in the life of your loved one? Is there anybody here that is willing to press on and go to another level in walk with God? Listen, we are talking about David. But listen, the giant tried to destroy David with his word. Before David was able to go to the next level, he had to fight against the giant. David next level didn't come without a battle. And if you look at his life from glory to glory, David in his corner he had been fighting bear, he had been fighting lion before he went now fight Goliath. See, you see, I told you that from that toe to that, from glory to glory, that toe there, before David moved from one level to another level, battle. After the battle of Yah, he had to begin to fight another battle for King Saul. He fought. In fact, when he became king, he needed to fight the Philistine. Not only that, he battled his own children, his own, his own son. So, what are we talking about? In 1 Samuel 17, 39, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 39, the Bible says, David striped source armor. I, 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 I saw sword over the armor and tried to walk, but he couldn't because he wasn't used to wearing them. I can't fight with all this, he said to Saul. I am not used to it. So he took it all off. This next thing that I want to point out to you is that God used what was tested in David's life to defeat the giant? God used what was tested in David's life to defeat the giant. If you notice that it was David's training, uh, his catapult, that defeated the giant, not Saul's armor. Not the armor. He, doesn't use, he, didn't, he did not use the armor of Saul. But God used what have been tested with David? David have tested that sling for many times. He have used it many times. So that is the instrument that God used to deliver his breakthrough to him. I think someone needs to know that God wants to anoint what is being tested in your life. What God? God wants to anoint what has been tested in your life. What is that that has been tested in your life? That small business that you started with, God want to anoint it. That thing that you have tested, that your skill, that your, that your skill, that your, that your talent, that is what God want to use to bring out your breakthrough. That's what God want to anoint. When God called Moses, God said, use, he said, what is your hand? He said, take it, he said, as you are going to the land of Egypt, take the rod in your hand. The raw in the hand, the woman that, um, that the, the wife of a prophet that ran to Elijah, he used what in the house. God did not say, go and buy her. He said, what do you have in the house? What is your life? 
That is what God wants to use. Your talent, that skill that you know, that you are putting in the, in the corner. That talent, that skill, that, 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 that certificate, that thing that you have tested that is, that is just like I do. That is what God wants to breed upon. David did not use the armor of Saul. Go and note it. I have known it before. Note it. But God anointed what David have tested. What is that your life? That is what God wants to use to deliver your bread onto your laps. What you need to do? You need to keep on working on it. Oh my God. Oh my God. What do you mean, Pastor? David didn't win the battle using Saul's armor, but he won the battle using a slingshot. Saul's armor has not been used or tested in David's life, but what was tested was David's slingshot. David has never worn that armor before, and he declared, I've never used it before. Let me, use, let me use what I am used to. What is in your life? I said it again. What is the oil in your home? What do you have at home? What is the, where, 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 where is the rod in your hand? That is what God wants to use. Praise the Lord. That is what God wants to use. David, God used to using sling and stone when he was in the wilderness, taking care of sheep. The lesson we can learn here is this. When you are high, get strong and use what we have to win victory over smaller battle, then it will make us stronger and more skillful to you the same thing to get the victory in a larger battle. David will be using that sling to win small, small battle, to kill small, small squirrel, to kill small, small thing. He has used it. Now, this is the battle of the giant. It's the same thing that I've been using to win small, small battle. That skill you have been using to hand small, small money is what God wants to build upon to make you a billionaire. Think about it. Think about it. God used the area that had been tested and tried in David's life to defeat the giant of the next level. God is about to use the same area where you have had the biggest battle and biggest testing to bring about one of your biggest breakthroughs. He want to use what you have been using, doing small, small things, to bring about your biggest breakthrough. Focus on that business. Focus on that skill. Develop it. That is what God wants to use. And that is, what, that is what happened out of David. David did not kill Goliath using the armor of Saul. If the armor is so powerful, why does Saul go on his own? Why does Saul use it? So focus. Look inward. Look inward. Hmm. See, if you are having struggle with your family, get ready because God's about to bring breakthrough where you have been being tested. The area that you have been tested right now is about to become the area of your greatest anointing. The area where you have been tested now is about to become your area of greatest anointing. You may be in a struggle like this, like, like the little chicken in the head, or like the butterfly in the cocoon, but you are about to break into another level. You need that to go through this struggle because it's only giving you the muscle that you need to survive the next level. You need to go through this battle, the battle of, 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 of uh, what we call bear, the battle of lion, gave David strength. He built this muzzle that time when he was in wilderness and he confronted lion and bear. Ah, what a wicked father. Why did he leave this small boy in this wilderness to fight? But that struggle, build this spiritual muzzle. So that struggle you are facing is building your spiritual muzzle. You are about to break through. You are about to break through. Oh man. God is about to raise a new level of not upon your life. Like I said, it is a promotion time. It's almost time when you have been working all month and it's a payday. When you have been working the whole month and there's a payday. This is the time. You have been working the whole month. Your payday is here. Weeping for a night. 
a night for that can be a whole month without money. But joy coming in the morning, that day of pity, when you see your paycheck and you smile, you're like a man that's been working for 35 years and retired. And he calculated all his benefit and was given unto him. Go and rest and enjoy the rest of your day. Brethren, well, it is a pity. That battle I've been facing was just set up for your bedroom. The battle you are facing is just a set up for your bedroom. Somebody give a testimony in this Sunday school this morning. I think he has given it before. And he said it. What for people some, 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 for, for some people for five months? And they don't pay him. And God say, God keep on telling him, I just want you to know that I am the one that's I am the one that sustain you. Yeah, I am the one that is sustaining you. The battle you are passing through is not the battle is not meant to overwhelm you. You are not you are it's not it's not designed to kill you. But remember what Galatians 6 9 says. Galatians 6 9. That we, we keep on pushing. So let us not become tired of doing good. Don't be tired of pushing. Don't give up. Keep on investing. Keep on sowing. Keep on working hard. Keep on praying. Keep on doing the right thing you are doing. Your time, your payday is at hand. Your breakthrough is coming. Let's look at life of Isaac. Genesis 26 1. And there was a farm in the land, beside the first farming that was in the day of Abraham. Isaac went out into Amalekah, king of Philistine, unto Jir. Verse 2, and the Lord had appeared unto him and said, Go not down unto Egypt, dwell in the land which I tell of thee. Verse 3, sojourn in this land, I will be with thee, I will bless thee, for unto thee and to thy seed I will give this land. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Verse 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the star of heaven. And give unto, unto thy seed all this country. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Verse 5. Because that Abraham, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charges, my command, my statue and my law. Verse 6. And Isaac dwell in Jerah. In this book of Genesis, uh, uh, verse uh, uh, twenty-six, one, we see the land that Isaac, the, 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 the land that Isaac received as inheritance, was a barren land. He entered into the land that was promising to him, but it was barren. Then, top of it off, God told him, "Stay right here because I want to bless you here. Stay here. Stay here." I want to bless you here. God told him, stay here. I want to bless you here. Sometimes, that is, that is, we are excited to raise the land that I'm promised to us, but when we get there, it is barren. So what happened? Sometimes, we enter to the land that God has promised us. God says, go. You ask God, you pray, you fast. Should I go to UK? God say go. Do I go to Canada? Where God say go. You get there, things are not working. Things are not what you expected. So what happened? God told us, don't go anywhere. I want you to stay right here because I'm going to bless you in this land. God wanted to build him more than giving him the blessing. So in verse 6, in 26, he said, See, then Isaac stayed in that land. That's our name, Gerah. So what Isaac began to do is to plant and to sow. He planted and sowed. He became very prosperous and fruitful, even in that land. He began to plant, he began to sow. And he became prosperous. Now, what happened is Isaac begin to plant and, and be fruitful. The Philistine didn't like that too much, so they began to come against him. 
The flesh didn't like Isaac, so they began to block. The, pl- they begin to block all the words that he has opened, he has done. So in order for Isaac to for breakthrough to another level of fruitfulness and blessing, he had to contend with the Philistine. So he kept on digging wells. For him to be fruitful, to want to move to one, the level of fruitfulness, he keep on doing what? He keep on digging wells. The first one he dug was called escape, which means contention. The second he dug was called sitter, which means opposition or enmity. The third well he dug was named Robot, meaning room. So when I get from this, when I get from this, that as Isaac continued to dig in spite of contention or opposition, God eventually blessed him with some room to be fruitful in the land. He was digging and they were filling it. He dug one, he called it opposition. He dug one, he called it enmity. Until he did not stop digging. Don't stop digging. Until you get what? To your real boat. There are going to be opposition. Who said there won't be opposition? Every good thing you have to face challenges. Before go, before I'm go, you have, you have passed through fire. Before diamond begin to be a diamond, begin to be a vile diamond that we look at. He has passed through fire at the highest level. So, he keep on digging. So, he dug the boat. So, is that I seek on to dig his part of contention and position. God eventually bless him with some room. Take key of for Isaac breakthrough. Isaac preserved through opposition and contention. He did not give up because they are because as he's digging the well and they are filling it, does not mean that Isaac will not give up. Maybe you are doing something, eh, what I've done before, I've not been rewarded. Keep on push forward. You will dig a well that God will give you a room. You will get your real boat. Don't give up. Don't give up. Ah, keep on praying for your family. Keep on praying for your loved one to get saved. Keep on believing for that breakthrough your family. We serve a God who answers prayer. He is a miracle working God. We serve God that answers prayer. Our God answers prayers. Keep on praying. Keep on working hard. Keep on investing. Keep on working on that small project. It's the project that I told you. It is what David, uh, David have tested in the corner that God used to give me a big victory in the open. It is the sling that is used. That small skill that he has learned how to use sling to keep to, to kill a, what they call small, small bear to keep squirrel. That is the skill he used graduated killing lion and bear. Then Killing the giant. What is that in your hand? What is that in your hand? There is something in your hand. There is something in your hand. As I'm rounding up, I want to tell you this. Don't turn back. If even it seems like you have been shaking and rattled, you may feel toasted all around, but don't give up. You are on the edge of a new experience that will bring you to a higher place. To somewhere you have never been before. God is about, is taking you on a journey. He's taking you somewhere you have never been before. You are going to experience a new thing. Listen to me. Don't turn back. Don't faint. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't don't retreat. Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. Don't even make a U-turn. Go straight. Keep on going. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't be tired. Don't give up. Don't give up. The Bible says, remember Galatians 6, 9. If we don't give up. Give me that. Give me an LNT. If you don't give up said, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last throughout the night. I say Galatians 6, 9, oh God. Galatians. So let us not get tired of doing what is good at just the right time. Don't get tired. We will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. 
don't give up, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. See, that's this film. They say, no retreat, no surrender. Don't retreat, don't surrender. Keep on pushing. It may not, it may not look like it now. Before butterfly, they call it butterfly. It does not look like butterfly at all. Does it look like butterfly? But what happened? Process. From egg to lava. From lava to caterpillar. From caterpillar, God bless you. From egg to lava, from egg to lava, from pupa, then to butterfly. But if you look at egg, if you look at lava, they don't look like butterfly. Even the pupa, the one that doesn't look like butterfly. But if this butterfly give up at lava stage or at the pupa stage, it will not become a beautiful butterfly. That is a lesson of life for you. Brethren, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep on praying. Keep on sowing. Keep on working hard. And the Lord will grant you your unlimited bedroom in the mighty name of Jesus. But just, just wherever you are, bow down your head. I just want you to talk to God this afternoon. I want to have a strength to push on in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I will not give up. Remember, Isaac did not give up. You know, he was keep on, he keep on digging the well until he get to the elbow. Say, Lord, I will not give up. In the name, I will not retreat. I will not surrender. But Lord, it is not over until I receive my unlimited bedroom in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your voice, lift your voice. If you are listening to you, are, if you are one of our listeners, you are listening to me this, uh, this afternoon, and you have not for one time accept Jesus Christ, your pastor, Lord, and Savior, brethren, the journey of the life may be difficult. <clears throat> Those who you look at in the Bible that we talk about, that they, they reach their real boat, you know, like Isaac, you know, we talk about David, we talk about all those ones, because they know God. God was the one. If you look, if you look at Micah, Micah chapter 2, verse 13, our, our test for this month, he said, the one that break through, we go ahead of them. If you want the one that can break through, Micah 3, 2, 13, if you want it to go ahead of you, Micah 2, 13, Say God will open the way for them and lead them out of exile. No, you know, say if you want God, you can give me NIV. Give me that NIV, please. I like the NIV translation of this. He said, the one who break open the way. If you want the one that break open the way to go ahead of you, you need to surrender unto him. So if you are here, you, if you are if you are part of this order today, and you have not for once surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. You have not accepted him as your person, as your personal and savior. This is time to do so. I want to just buy your, your, your head down wherever you are and confess your sin to God and tell him that you are helpless. If you come and help you, tell him to come to, to come to your life and become your personal Lord and Savior. Tell him that you surrender your life to him. Say, Lord, come over my life. Lord, take over my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, forgive me all my sin. Lord, I'm Lord, Lord, wash me by the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want to talk to God. To talk to God, say, Father, the power to sin no more, give unto me. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, write my name in the book of life. In the mighty name of Jesus, if you are saved this small prayer, I say, congratulations, you are now born again. So you can pray this prayer. Say, Lord, go ahead of me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open the way for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I will not give up at the edge of my breakthrough. I will not give up at the edge of my breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give adoration, Lord. We thank for your word that you have listened to us in the name of Jesus. That if you hold on there, if you keep on pushing, that our breakthrough is at the corner. To you be all that glory. Father, I pray, as many that have given their life to you today, Lord, accept them, Lord. Write their name in the book of life. You said those who come to you, you will not cast away. As they have come to you and accept you as their personal and the Father, please don't cast them away in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, write their book, their name in the book of life in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, and every one of us too, Lord, that have confessed one of the other, one with the other, Father, that we pray, Lord, you will come to strengthen us with this battle, in this battle in this of this life will not overcome us. You don't overwhelm us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for every one of us, Lord, grant us unlimited virtue in every area of our life in the mighty name of Jesus. We receive grace and power. We will not be weary, we will not be tired, we will not give up in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, King of glory. For in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Offering time, blessing time. Let's give our offering and let's give our tithe. Our tithe is the 10% of our income and our offering is whatever we are free to give to God. The account number is there. Account name, RCCCG slash JCC. Account number is there, sort code is there. And um, if you want to, or you can go to our website and give, follow the give uh, instruction and give. Give, it shall be given unto us. Good measure, press down and over. I shall men give to our person as we give. As we give, the Lord will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me just give you one minute to, for you to negotiate all those negotiable. Amen. Father, we thank you because of our God. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give adoration. Father, we thank you, Lord, for everyone in this church, everyone that listening to us, that they pay their tithe, they're giving their offering, that give us the opportunity to keep on running this service. We don't do what we are doing. To you be all that glory. Father, I pray, men, as many that have given their tithe, I pray in the name of the Lord, the blessing of those who pay tithe according to your word. You see, test me with this. If I have not opened the window of heaven and poured the blessing to your room that will be able to contain it. Father, because they have fulfilled their own part of the bargain and you are a covenant-keeping God, Father, fulfill your part in the mighty name of Jesus. Open the windows of heaven for this one. Bless them abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that sons of income will not run dry in the mighty name of Jesus. Their business, Lord, and love come to grow, come to multiply in the mighty name of Jesus. In their place of what they begin to experience promotion upon promotion in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as many that I give you this morning, Father, you will give back unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Good measure, press down, running over. Let men give to our bosom in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you hold no man anything. As we give it unto you, Father, give back unto us in abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, give all back to us financially. Give us back to us in unlimited breakthrough. Give it back to us in good health, in sound mind, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified. And for those who want to give, but because they don't have, I pray, let struggle, let financial struggle come to an end in their life in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, bless them abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, open a new Lord, open a new door for them in the name of Jesus. Grant them what, a, what I call unlimited breakthrough in their business, in their life, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for, for joining the service. May the Lord come to bless and prosper you in the mighty name of Jesus. We should not forget um, praying with the pastor. We call it prayer, hour of prayer on Tuesday <clears throat> from 6 to 7. That's going to be on uh, Facebook. <clears throat> and on Wednesday is our school of sources from 7 to 8. That's going to be on Zoom. Uh, the Zoom contact will be sent out to us so, um, before that time. And um, let's, please, if you have a question, and let us, it's, it's, it's uh, what do you call it, interactive, so we can interact in ourselves. Then we can, we can learn from ourselves. God bless you. So, we'll be, you know, in these two days, we'll be expecting you on, the, on those platforms. You are blessed. I just want to, to thank those who have made the service possible, the IT department, uh, those who are here. I say thank you for the work you are doing. The Lord that has having will reward you abundantly. You will enjoy unlimited breakthrough in every area of your life. And for everyone that has here that made the service very encouraging and very uh, interesting, may the Lord bless all of you. Thank you for coming. You are blessed. In Jesus' name, the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's take our mortal confession. This is my season of unlimited breakthrough. As I proceed to this new season, unlimited breakthrough shall be my testimony. The Lord shall make me the star of my city and the rainbow of my world. My testimony shall seem like a dream. My mouth shall say with confidence, My God is good. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon me for great exploit. My gift shall pave a way for me to the top, and there I shall reign. I shall laugh over every situation. 
my life will always be peaceful and I shall be an example of all amazing things. All my pending blessings shall be delivered to me this season. The Almighty God will command the heavens and the earth to act in my favor. As long as there is God, I will never know shame but joy everlasting. Declaration being possession, I shall have all what I have declared in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Happy Sunday.